Hampshire was filmed before a live studio audience and is brought to you by Back Alley Sex Change Operations. Ugh. Also, the corporation from Subnautica. Apparently. And it's only one letter off. Hmm. Really activates the old almonds. Really chopped the fuck out of that pea pod. I didn't use a hot dog. I don't have hot dogs. I don't eat hot dogs. They're all pig anuses. Ugh. Anyway, this is one of the two gate valves that arrived in the mail recently. And these are going to be like the airlocks that keep the water out of modules when I'm uh, removing one of them from the rest to bring it up to clean. I can now connect and disconnect them while submerged without allowing water inside. Forms a seal and then it opens just as easily. And it's got these nice four bolts which I can remove and replace with longer bolts which will penetrate the habitat wall when I want to mount it. Now, I know what you're thinking, and it's disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourself. But also, you might be thinking, gate valves, tubing, isn't that skipping forward a couple steps? And it is. I'm feeling bold because I got excited by all that Patreon money coming in. It's going to make it possible to move forward a lot quicker than I'd planned. And uh, tunnels of some sort interconnecting the habitats has been, for many years, the number one most requested feature. And it's understandable why. I mean, when you see these habitats in the aquarium, they're cool, but they'd be so much cooler if the hamster could move in between them. Uh, that's easier said than done for a bunch of reasons. For example, let's say I had a rigid tube just connecting these. Let's say I cut out a hole here and a hole here. I connected these straight across with a rigid acrylic tube. That's great. I can seal it and make it watertight, but then I can't ever move this or move this because they both have a lot of weight and you know they have a lot of mass. And if I move one of these slightly relative to the other, it's going to fracture the tube or, or it's going to more likely uh, fracture and break the watertight seal on the spot where the tube passes from one to the other. So unless I somehow do this while they're submerged and then never move them again, that's not a viable solution to the problem of interconnecting the habitats. Tubes! <laughs> That's right, you need tubes. You need flexible tubes so that when they're connected, they can move relative to one another on the seafloor and be positioned at different heights and, and like angles relative to each other without breaking anything. But also, this is a essential element of making the network, future network of interconnected habitats modular. Because if you think about this long term, in order to, to clean and resupply uh, individual portions of a larger colony consisting of many habitats interconnected with one another, I'm going to have to be able to disconnect individual modules and bring them to the surface for cleaning and resupply without allowing water to flood into the rest of the colony. Uh, that's where the gate valves come in. I, I'm going to, at some point... Uh, cut a hole here using something like this probably but this is not the correct diameter I'm gonna to need to make another trip to Lowe's then I'll be able to stick this part through the hole into the habitat so that this flat square part is flush with the wall and I'll be able to, to drill four smaller holes for each of these bolts uh, to penetrate through the wall which is what's gonna hold this firmly on there and I'm gonna spread some silicone sealant all around this flat surface to bond it and watertight it and I'm going to put it this way because it'll look a lot uglier this way, having this poking up. It'd be better to just have this be as close and flush to the habitat wall as possible. And having done that, I'll now have a sort of airlock, lock, not an airlock, it's, it's only a single door, but it'll be a watertight hatch that I can open and close, that I can open and close, for fuck's sake, that I can open and close while submerged. That's the thing these habitats will still be usable separately because they'll be modular. That's the whole point of this, so that I can connect and disconnect these habitats while they're underwater, as needed, without allowing water into any section that I don't want it in, which is none of them usually. Anyway, as soon as I've done that to this habitat, I'm going to bore a hole here in this habitat and mount uh, one of these two gate valves the same way into the wall of, of this structure and then I'll have the two hatches uh, installed sealed so that they're nice and flush and watertight 
and they'll be ready to connect. Now once they're both situated on the bottom of the lake or pond or whatever, uh, I'll just slot this tubing into the port and it, it's a tight fit but it's not a perfect fit it's, or it's not a good enough fit I don't think. I'm gonna have to cut up a balloon and make some kind of uh, water resistant skirt for this or something. It doesn't have to be perfect but it has to be close enough and it's not close enough right now. Anyway I'll put one end of the tube into this and the other end uh, the other end yeah I had to buy 10 feet of this minimum that was the minimum order size. I only need about this much or maybe that much because it's not really that flexible. Anyways the other end goes into the other valve and once at this point both valves are closed it should go without saying uh, then I'm gonna have a hole I poked in here with a fitting for an aquarium airline tube that, and I'll take a second airline from the compressor attach it here there'll be a hole on the bottom as well and by pushing air into the tube it'll purge slowly water out from inside and this is one of the reasons it was so important that the tubing be clear so I could see when the water was all purged out. Then I'll be able to disconnect the airline, pl plug it with some kind of cap on both ends and with both ends of the tubing firmly connected to both of these valves and all the water purged out then and only then hold on will I be able to open the valves thus joining the two habitats and I can do the same in reverse. So when I need to remove one of these from the water for maintenance or cleaning or just putting more food and water in it, I just close the valves on both habitats. Then I can, I, I guess I could flood it slowly. I don't need to. I can just pop this out, the tube out, uh, bring the habitat up to the surface with me and, and I'll have separated just one of the, the habitats from the rest of the colony without admitting water into either of them. Maybe you're like, what's the big deal? It's just a bunch of tubes and boxes. But how to dock undersea structures or vehicles to one another so as to provide safe passage through unbroken shirt sleeves habitat conditions from one to the other, it's not easily solved. There's a reason why in the whole history of manned undersea structures, only one habitat, Hydrolab, ever had a docking collar for submersibles. And the only equivalent to that today are nuclear submarines, which have a docking collar that's used by the rescue sub in order to evacuate sailors in the event that the nuclear submarine is disabled and resting on the bottom. So when I see comments like this over and over again, make tunless, make tunless, t t tunless. I want to, I'm trying, it's hard. Give him some tubes to crawl around in underwater. Wow! I didn't think of that! It's hard! The only reason this is feasible for an amateur to do to begin with is because the habitats are ambient pressure. We don't have to deal with a pressure differential. Even then, it's, it's not easy. Oh uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter now. Go check me out on Twitter. I'm posting rare photos from the early stages of the project that many of you newcomers may not have seen. So like the original prototype, Mark III habitat, I'm posting at the rate of about one or two photos per day. Of course I've already got dumpster babies like this telling me I'm Satan McHitler for putting a hamster in a cage underwater instead of putting them in a cage on land. Please do not retaliate against these people. Their intentions are good, and that's important to me. I don't ever want someone to be bullied online or otherwise because of me. That would be profoundly upsetting. Some of these comments, though, like, uh, they hate to be in small places without their, the possibility to escape. That's any cage. Unless your cage has, like, a, a doggy door on it so they can come and go as they please. There's no benefit for the hamster to be imprisoned underwater. They're imprisoned on land. You keep them in cages against their will. It makes no difference to the hamster if they're underwater or not. I mean, am I wrong? I've got a point, don't I? And I thought I was the one with brain problems. Anyway, check out the Twitter, spreading the awareness of the great cause. Lastly, huge, immense, tremendous thanks to everybody who has donated to the Patreon. Some of you got cold feet as the, the billing approached. I don't blame you. I'm grateful for anything I get. If you guys, if especially if the, the donators of like 20 bucks and up want me to give them a shout out, 
uh, get at me via the DMs on Patreon. I don't just want to do that without asking you because I don't know if you want me attracting attention to your name on there. But thank you from the bottom of my heart. I couldn't do this without you. I feel confident this is something you'll be able to tell your grandkids that you contributed to with pride in your voice as they, uh, assuming that you're just having another episode of dementia, uh, administer more morphine.